Hey everyone, my name is Gaurav and in this video, let's see how we can be validating the schema using Postman. Now, as you might be knowing, Postman is able to run test cases on your APIs and validating schema is one of the most important factors of any testing. In case your backend changes and the schema changes that is being sent back from our server side to our front end, many of the functionalities on our front end can break. So let's see how we can be testing this using Postman. Now I've already set up a API. This is going to be like a mock API and I'm using this website called as Bceptor. In this, we can be creating some mock APIs. Now in this mock API, I'm going to be sending this response JSON. So as you can see, I already have the response JSON set up here. So we have a couple of fields set up here and we're going to be calling this API from Postman. So let's head over to Postman. Now in Postman, I already have the URL copied up. So just paste it here. So it, as you can see, this is my entire URL and I'm going to be hitting this endpoint called as slash person. So let's click on send. And this is a get request as you can see. And we do in fact get a response of 200 along with the data that I had mocked. Now this is going to be very helpful and we're going to be testing out a couple of scenarios here. So for example, you can see we have different types of field. We have the user, which is of string type an age field, which is of the numeric type. We also have an object within this, which is the address object within which we have multiple fields. Now we also have added an array of the hobbies of this particular person and also a Boolean value. So this is all the schema that we need to be testing. Now, whenever you want to be testing anything in Postman, you're going to be heading over to the test section. Now you can see that we have a test section right here, and this is where we're going to be writing our test cases. There's a lot more that can be done in Postman, but we're going to be keeping that for a later time. Now let's go ahead and try to test out this schema. Now we're going to be testing multiple things. So first of all, we're going to be trying to test the data types. So when I say data types, we need to be making sure that the user is of type string. We have the age of type integer and so on. Now, when we're doing the schema validation, we're going to be using an external library that Postman supports and the library is called as AJV. Now let's go ahead and import this library for usage. So I'm going to be saying as const AJV equals to require and then AJV. All right. So we now need to be initializing this library. So let's say const capital AJV equals to small AJV and then we execute it. All right. So now our library is now initialized. We can go ahead and start writing the test cases. Now, when you want to be writing the test cases, you're going to be starting off with saying PM dot test. And in here we write down what we are trying to test. So in here we are doing the schema validation. So let's type in schema validation. And this is going to be running a anonymous function. So just like that. All right. So now we have it ready. We can start writing our assertions. Now, first of all, what we need to be doing is we need to be defining the schema that this API needs to be following. So let's go ahead and define that schema. So I'm going to be saying as const schema equals to an object. Now, when you want to be starting off defining the schema, first we're going to be typing in the type what we are expecting in the response. So in this, we are expecting a JSON object. So as you can see, this is a JSON value. If I go to the headers, you can see that the content type is application slash JSON. All right, let's go back to the body and we are going to be typing in here as object. All right, so with that done, we are ready to type in the properties of this particular object. Now, as you can see, we have multiple properties here. So we are going to be typing in properties and let's define our properties here. So the first property that we are going to be defining is called the user property. So make sure that you have it like that and let's type in the type of the property. So again, with an object, we'll put in type and the type is as string. All right. So that is one property setup. We can do the same thing for the other properties as well. So this was the first one. Let's copy that over to the second row. And this property is called as age and the type is integer. All right. So that's two down. Let's move on to the next one, which is address. All right. Now things get interesting here. We have already an object here and within this, we had another object. So how do we do that? Well, it's quite straightforward. We are instead of defining it as a string, we're going to be putting up here as object. And again, this is going to be having multiple properties. So let me just drive in and enter and let's put in the properties here. And we're going to be defining the properties that are there in this address object. So the properties are country 
and this is again of the type string so let me just quickly copy this over from here and let's move on to the next one so we have city and street so this is going to be called as city and the next one is street over here the type is string and in here the type is integer let me quickly fix that spelling all right Okay, so we have uh, the address object set up as well. Let's move on to the next one, which is hobbies key. So we can just copy this over from here to here. And let's rename this to hobbies. And the type is not object this time, but the type is going to be of array. All right, so that's pretty much it. We have the last one, which is of the type boolean. So I'm just going to be putting up another property, which is our final property is called is married. And this is of type Boolean. All right. So we have all our properties set up and our schema ready for usage. Now to use the schema, we are just going to be adding in another things over here. So we need to be first initializing our schema to be making sure that it's ready for usage. So for initializing the schema, we are going to be saying AJV dot compile and in this we need to be passing in the schema so we pass in our schema object and this is going to be returning a validation function so we need to be having this in another variable so let's call that as const validate equals to ajv compile all right so we have that ready we have the validation function ready now we need to be getting a hold of the response body now to get the hold of response we can say const response equals to pm dot response dot json and then we can move on and start the validation itself so in here we can say const is valid equals to validate and then we put it in the response object all right so that is done now finally we need to be writing our assertion what we expect this is valid object to be now, if all the schema is true and we get the right response from the server, we are going to be getting this as a Boolean value. So we need to be making sure that is valid is equal to true. So we're going to be saying here as PM dot expect is valid dot two dot B dot true. So that is pretty much it. We can go ahead and execute this request. So let me click on send. And if we go to our test cases, we can see that one test case is in fact passing and that is pretty good. We can make sure that the server is sending the exact schema that we were requesting for. Now that is the basic validation that you're going to be putting up in any place, but maybe you want some sort of advanced validation. Maybe you want to be checking the length of the string or the characters or the number value that is being sent from the server side. Now, for example, let's suppose we are going back to our response and we see that the age is 30. And let's suppose that we do not want any person to be allowed to be registered who is of a greater age than 30. So how can we be doing that? Well, uh, properties also take up one additional parameter here. So for example, let's suppose you want to be validating the length of a string. You can uh, add some additional properties here. So for example, after typing in type equals to string, we can add some additional property as max length. So just make sure that you have this in double quotes and the spelling correct obviously and in here we can put up the max length as let's suppose 10 characters similarly we can do that for the integer as well so in the integer let's say we have maximum and in here we're going to be seeing the maximum age of a person is going to be 30. all right so that is the two properties that i would like to add here we can also add some additional properties for objects as well as for arrays so let's take the example of this property called as street. Now it might happen sometime that the person does not enter the street number. Instead he enters some street name. So in that case, our this property validation is going to be failing because he's going to be passing in a string value instead of an integer value. So in that case, you can also make sure that the property can be of either type. So it can be either of integer type or the string type. Now, if you want to be doing that it's quite straightforward, instead of making it a single string, you can convert this into an array and put here as integer comma string. Now what this verifies is it can be of type integer or of type string, this particular property right here, which is street. Okay. So let's move on to the final additional property that we're going to be adding here, which is for the array. So we have the array here. 
Now, let's suppose we have a condition on the server side. We don't need to be adding more than three hobbies for a particular person. So how can we be restricting that? Well, that's also possible. So we can say here, comma, max items. And in here we can say what are the number of maximum items that can exist. So let's say the maximum items that can be is three. Let's put in a comma again. You can also validate the kind of items that are going to be added into this array. Now, if you're working in JavaScript, it's possible to be having multiple types in a single array. But maybe if you're working something like on Java, you do not really have that and you need to be restricting the type that is entered in a particular array. So you can do that by adding an additional property here called as items. And in this, we are going to be defining the type of the item. So let's put up the type as string. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. Let's try to fire up this request once again and make sure the, all the changes are being reflected. So let me click on send. And in fact, we see that all the result is passing. We get the test of one. Now, just to make sure that things are working as expected, let me do one thing. I'm going to be going to the server side or my mock server. I'm going to be changing a couple of values. So let's say for example, for, to start off, we're going to be changing the age. So instead of 30, let's increase that to probably 40. So let me switch over to my mock server and I'm going to be updating the age to 40. All right, let me go and save the rule. All right, my rule is saved. Let's go back to our server side and fire this request once again. And this time the age is returned as 40 and you can see that my test case is failing. So this is how your assertions are going to be working. So you can also test out for the, for the other properties. So let's try that out for one more thing, probably for the street one. So in this, we can say that we are expecting both of type integer and string. So let's go back and fix the one that we had changed right now. So this let's make this back as 30. And instead of passing 301 as an integer, I'm going to be passing this as a string. So with that done, let's go and save this and let's try to go back into Postman and fire this request. Now, after firing this request, you can see that the test case is still passing. If I go to the body, it is being passed as a string, but the test case is passing because we expect it to be either of type integer or string. Now, AJ is quite powerful library and you can go up to the documentation and see what more additional groups you can be specifying on the schema. So if you just head over to Google, type in AJV. You can see that we have multiple things here. And one important thing is the JSON data type. So these are all the data types that can be validated. So we have null, object, integer, string. We have seen multiple of them already in this video. All right, so that is pretty much it for this video. Now, if you found this useful, you're also gonna be enjoying my course on Udemy. I've created a very detailed course on Udemy regarding Postman, and it is updated to the latest. We cover things as testing. We see how we can be running automated testing and so on and also give you a very good idea on what exactly are REST APIs and how they work behind the scene and also things regarding authentication. Now, I'm gonna be adding that link in the description of the video. Make sure to have a look at it and I'm sure you're gonna be enjoying that as well. All right, so that's me signing off. Take care and have a good day.